Hi. Hello, 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 everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? How's everyone doing tonight? Welcome once again to our broadcast moment. Moments of Excellence with Trustbridge Academy coming your way every Thursday evening at about 8 p.m. UK time. God bless you for joining us once again. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. God bless you. I can see my peeps already popping up. Just say a hi or a hello in the comment section. God bless you. We want to say thank you for joining us once again tonight. We really celebrate you and we celebrate God and we praise God for a night like this. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. It is such a pleasure to come your viewing again this week. We don't take it for granted. We appreciate you for tuning in every single time. We come on here to share the word of God. Uh, Trust Bridge Academy is a leadership academy where we raise a people of excellence, okay, using holistic avenues by the word of God. And sometimes on a Thursday, we would come by didactic teachings or by um, storytelling. Whichever way we bring the word of God to you, it's for it to come to you in a place that's relatable so that you can take that word of God and apply it. So it is our applied Bible study sessions. That's what we do in this session. So we want to say thank you so much for joining us. So I'm really excited about tonight because it's going to be a little bit different, uh, a little bit interactive, a little bit different tonight because of the topic. For those of you who have seen the title on there, you will see we're going to be talking, hello God baby, <laughs> we're going to be talking about sex tonight guys. Oh my gosh, for those who know me in the um, public speaking spheres, you know it's one of my favorite topics in the whole wide world. Behind the cameras, oh my God, I'll probably blush talking about sex, but when it comes to preaching the word of God, mm Mm -mm. I'm an orator for excellence on this particular topic. Amen. I like the topic so much. I went ahead and I wrote a book on it. And so tonight we're going to be dissecting the word of God with regards to the topic sex. And for those of you who haven't seen uh, my book, so tonight it's going to be slightly different. Like I said, it's going to be quite interactive. And, um, those of you who haven't seen my book, apologies, I just picked it up. The Adam and Eve Phenomenon, it's the forbidden fruit. And it's really a manual and a book that teaches you about God's precepts with regards to sexual relationships in particular. But um, the targeted audience here was actually youths and singles. And the reason God wanted me to to use that as my target audience, apart from the fact that we have a thriving youth ministry, is that, you know, um, um, this is an audience that God really put upon our hearts to speak to consistently, you know, with regards to what the precepts, what the word of God wants them to know. And so that's why we come your viewing today. You know, um, last week, I think uh, World Purity Day was celebrated. And so we've chosen to do a series on sanctified sexuality to celebrate World Purity Day month basically okay so we're going to be doing this series and i want you to come along with us on this journey as we talk about this hot topic you know in the church in school sex is such a hot topic sex is on every billboard sex sells sex is a symbol you know you can interpret sex any which way you want to in the 21st century but the idea behind this session or this series that we are going to be doing is to be able to dissect break down exegete explore and educate you with regard Regards, or ourselves, you know, educate me myself as well, with regards to the topic sex, sexuality, and the title is Sanctified Sexuality. And the, the whole idea behind this is this. There are a lot of ways you could define sex. There are a lot of ways your world would define sex. But the truth of the matter is you need to know what sanctified sexuality is. You need to know what God is saying about sex because he created it. And I don't want us to forget that. Okay. So as we go into this tonight's sex session, I want it to be interactive. God, I want to know your opinions, guys. Please do not be shy. Write what you think. Write your questions. I have questions with me that would are usually asked, you know, that I can answer whilst we're on this broadcast. But if I can't take your questions on this broadcast as well please please do feel free to write comments in the chat box and we will get back to you again it's going to be a totally different kind of session we're going to be talking about this book review so um, uh, with regards to sanctified sexuality as we celebrate world purity month 
okay if you like we're talking about purity chastity especially with regards to our sexuality okay so let's go ahead and pray i know that i have so many people joining on tonight and i know this is such a hot topic and i know that people are bursting to say you know what they know about it probably experiences or exposure or things you've been educated about but whoever you need to you know you know that needs to be on this platform or you need to share okay press the share button let them be on this platform so that we can all be educated together about this topic so let's say a word of prayer as we go into this session today father we just want to say thank you thank you god you're the creator of all things omnipotent god and omniscience god you're ever present ever you know you are good good father and we bless your name tonight thank you creator of the heavens and the earth thank you lord for all that you have done and all that you will yet do we give you all the glory and we bless your name we come towards you to you to you tonight oh lord god and we say father receive our praise even as we go into your word tonight oh god let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable in your sight oh god we pray oh lord god that we would only say things that you want to be said upon this platform tonight with regards to this sensitive topic lord take your place open the eyes of our hearts oh lord god let's see you through through this topic and through this discuss in jesus mighty mighty name we have prayed just give the lord a wave give the lord a wave give the lord a wave let him know that you are here father we say thank you in jesus mighty name so for those of you joining us tonight we're talking about sex people yes we're talking about sex tonight and the title as we have put on there is sanctified sexuality sanctified sexuality we're talking about our sexuality as christians okay it doesn't matter how again as i said previously how sex has been defined in your world in my world in our immediate sphere in our workplaces it doesn't matter how sex has been defined before we're going into the word of god deeply into the word of god today to find out what god says about this now again as i said previously the target audience would usually be singles and youths and i even wrote a book about this you want to grab your copy okay <laughs> about um, um the adam and eve phenomenon and it's the forbidden fruit okay so uh basically what led me to have this topic today again we've celebrated world purity month uh and i'm going to be doing a series on sex sanctified sexuality so basically what's brought about this topic and why did i have to write a book about sex and i'm just going to go into that rather quickly now we live in the 21st century guys 21st century in a sex crazed world we live in a sex crazed world where everything and i promise you everything is centered around sex and it is literally burdening bordering on the ridiculous you know sex is seen as a casual encounter sex sells sex is seen as symbols everywhere there was a day my husband and i were watching tv people you're not going to believe this and we were watching an advert it was a shampoo advert and this girl okay was washing her hair in the shower mind you she was on her own okay and i promise you she was probably having an orgasm with shampoo shampoo how does shampoo give you an orgasm but anyway that was the dilemma i'm sitting there watching tv and i could not understand this commercial it was no it did not make any sense at all so she was washing her hair and as her hands were going in her hair she was oh ah and you know she was screaming out in this large massive orgasms i couldn't really understand what the commercial was about but then that's not the first commercial that would sell sex and uh, there was a commercial that was taken off national tv in the past it was about butter margarine butter butter that you put on your bread as a spread uh they were trying to advertise butter and a a, a, a couple were in their bed having sex and their child walked in some really sordid affair i couldn't really understand that commercial either but where am i going with this i'm trying to say that sex sells sex is a symbol sex is used as undertoned loud undertones you know in a lot of um a lot of things that we do in this day and time and it is disturbing it is disheartening but that's the illustration that we find and it is the truth in our day and time that young people are now becoming more aware sexually in the 21st century in my time it wasn't that bold and it wasn't that strongly in your face but i feel so sorry for the um uh, 21st century youth right now because the struggle is real and it is the 
truth you know sex has become such a massive big deal in their generation that i think it's important that we address these issues because these issues have gone silent by the church for so long young people are getting more sexually aware you know parents if you're joining on here and and you you don't really like what you're hearing unfortunately it's the truth your young people are becoming more sexually aware they are becoming more sexually active at a very young age pornography is on the rise masturbation is on the rise stds are an epidemic your studios your kids will go off to university and probably uh, um, use their nine o'clock uh, uh, classes in an std clinic trying to get a tablet or uh an um uh, the, the you know the um after 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 night pill or after birth oh my god you can tell i have no clue but anyway the birth the birth the birth control pill you get the day the night the day after the night before right okay so basically they um the they, they, pornography is on the rise you know and our world is left dying dying from the choices we've made especially sexually okay and this is literally there is literally no moral compass anymore you know it's like the days of babel you know now we're capable of doing anything and we do everything you know as uh, for those who don't know my day job i'm a public health analyst i'm a public health practitioner and i've had to go into schools to teach sex education and it is sad and i want parents to to listen right now it is sad that i've had to go in and teach your six to eight year olds about sex education because they were already having sex at eight would you believe it but that's the truth eight to ten year olds who were called to give sex education as they had begun to have sex for each with each other the age of innocence has dropped okay there's an increase in immorality okay media is exposing our youths a day in day out to illicit sex the next generation just has erroneous information and faulty foundations about sex i repeat the next generation just has erroneous information and faulty foundations about sex and as a youth pastor i'm clearly bothered obviously i'm clearly bothered i'm worked up as a public health analyst it's a deep concern it's an epidemic that's what we're giving out free condoms every day because of sexual choices that young people are making you know so i'm concerned about it professionally and i'm concerned about it spiritually because this is an epidemic that has raged through our generation it's a social behavior you understand it, it has, their sexual life has now become a social behavior that needs that needs supervision that needs curbing and we are progressively becoming what the most intellectual generation but yet the lead the most misinformed generation and so this realization then led me the statistics that i've read out to you now then led me to actually start a series with my youths in church titled sex on my mind sex on my mind i start telling them i've got sex on my mind and i know that probably sounds like a porn movie title but it was one way of getting their attention so i was like i've got sex on my mind guys but i eventually had to retitle the series lessons my youth taught me about sex because my oh my if you're a parent and you're listening to me those youths taught me a thing or two about sex now the series started off as though i was going to be teaching them a lot about what i knew about sex experientially you know and, and, and psychologically physiologically professionally but what they taught me you will not find in any textbook amen so i sat amongst the youths for the duration of my series i started a series with young people for those who are just joining and um, for the duration i decided to learn from them as they learned from me and as a youth pastor i realized that if you want youth to listen to you you got to listen to them you've got to be vulnerable enough and you've got to be humble enough to sit there and hear their opinion too and i think this is what we need in this generation so if you're a youth leader listening to me a pastor a teacher listen whenever you want to talk to youth about any topic especially topics as sensitive as sex you must be prepared to answer difficult questions to give your own examples in your truth and true knowledge and vulnerable enough to hear them and be heard you know and in these sessions i had with these young people there were slangs there were abbreviations there were phrases that honestly would only make you blush and can only be found in the urban dictionary people
okay so i learned a lot about the young generation and what their idea about um, sex was and the truth now began to hit home at that point what did i realize i realized that this is how it's supposed to be single seminars youth forums and churches as an entity we need to start creating spaces and places that encourage young people to be in groups where they can think where they can hear where they can learn where they can stand up and speak out without fear that is how they learn what did i just say if you're a pastor a teacher a parent listening to me please listen we need to create spaces in our churches spaces in our homes spaces where our young people can think can hear can learn can stand up and can speak without fear of reprimand and fear of judgment okay because youth I feel like youths don't get enough meaningful time to discuss sex in an honest open forum i don't really think so i think the reason they probably don't speak is that number one they feel like they are judged even before they begin to speak again a lot of our youth are already sexually active so it's a place where or it's a situation where they feel if i come and say what i know about sex people think i know too much everybody thinks they're already doing it they're already stereotyped even when they don't even know what they're doing and so i really feel we need to begin to create spaces and places where young people can talk about sex safely and and they can talk about sex in a place where it's confidential, where they can also learn. Now, I've been doing this for the longest time, okay? I've been doing this for the longest time, not just as a youth pastor, but as also as a public health practitioner. I'm also a speaker at events. I speak, you know, at, um, you know, um, 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 bridal showers, single events, you know, weddings, you know, church seminars. And I'm quite comfortable with the topic of sex. I'm quite comfortable to have these discussions and wholesome conversations about sex education and uh, youths are incredibly hungry people they are incredibly inquisitive they want to learn and they would go to any extent to actually learn youths will go to any extent to actually learn what they need to learn so having said that honestly the information in 21st century is not very far-fetched if you have a phone in your hands you can get any information you require or desire you can do it yourself you know and you can get the information so again this is also addressed um to to um uh, uh, pastors, preachers, teachers, parents, guardians, youth leaders, if you don't feel comfortable having conversations about sex with your youths, call somebody who can until you get comfortable having those conversations. But do not leave your youths, do not leave your youths, I repeat, without guidance, supervision or conversations or places and spaces where they can have these conversations. This is literally a cry for help, okay? Now, um, um, we were talking about places where they extract the information they get. And I'm going to break the information into different categories. The information that young people get about sex. Today, if you're just joining us, we're talking about sanctified sexuality. Basically, we're talking about sex, okay? And this is a review on my book uh, title that I published two years ago, The Adam and Eve Phenomenon, uh, The Forbidden Fruit. If you want a copy of this, please, please, please message us. Churches actually get this in bulk and give it to their youth groups so that they can have discussions around around this book trust me you will benefit from it especially when you cannot have these conversations with your young people this book opens up conversations because it starts with stories about young people being able to share experiences as well anyways let's go back to how our young people get information so the first place is school again we're talking about how do we get again i said that our generation is the most intellectual yes the most misinformed about sex and sex education now the young people get sex education from many places so i'm going to break down the places in which they get sex education the first part they get sex education is school now the school sex education curriculum in the uk teaches about sex from about year seven which is about age 11 or so or even younger and as much as it sounds like a good idea to get sex education early in life at this age it merely just gives them the facts in a very neutral manner again the sex education taught to your children in school as part of the curriculum only gives them the facts in a neutral manner what am i trying to say it teaches them about using protection having sex se safe sex having access to condoms healthcare services and that 
that is all it raises an awareness of stds it raises an awareness of homosexuality it introduces them to sex same sex relationships and that is not an effective way to teach your young people about sex it really isn't especially when you want to infuse moral and christian values into your youth and so school again is the first usually the first place where youths learn about sex but unfortunately what they learn about sex in school is just part of a curriculum that teaches neutrality and inclusivity about all kind of things that you might not be comfortable with as a parent so be careful what you sign up for for your kids having sex education okay so christian youths are so supposed to be responsible with regards to the decisions they make about sex it's not just about teaching you about stds or you know teaching you about where to get a condom from or where to get your morning after pill no no there's more to sex than guiding yourself against you know, um, um, recklessness and STDs. But anyway, that's what school teaches you. The next place, so we're talking about categories of places where people get, to, young people get access to learning about sex. So usually the first place is school, because especially in Afro, for my target audience, Afro-Caribbean youths, usually they don't hear it from home, usually. They hear it from school, first of all. Now, the next place they tend to hear about sex from is home. Now, the youths, and um, i've had conversations with you know i've had a lot of discussions with youth they usually say that they prefer for parents and youth and uncles and aunties around them to be open and vulnerable when talking about sex you know with them they want you to teach them and i appreciate the fact that especially with regards to our culture afro-caribbean culture nobody's going to sit down with you as a parent and say well you know the birds and the bees you've got boobs now you've got a penis this is how it works nobody has this kind of conversations that is not dining room talk so nobody's really going to be comfortable to have this kind of conversations with them and so what these young people tend to hear from home is that sex is prohibited you can't have sex you shouldn't have sex you mustn't have a boyfriend and that's all they hear all the time at home the problem is they don't know the why you're just telling them the what in my house you don't have sex before marriage you don't this you don't that and then the youths you know you know the funny thing because you know they can be cheeky right they come to me and they say auntie i don't know why my mom keeps telling me not to have sex when she had me at 16 you know or i don't know why my dad keeps telling me not to have sex when i was the the flower girl at their wedding what am i trying to say not because they are they are being i mean they're being cheeky obviously i know about the question but what i'm saying is that when you're talking to them about sex don't speak to them in absolutes don't talk to them like you're a saint don't speak to them as though they don't know what's what you know be vulnerable enough to say you know what i made mistakes in my time i just don't want you to make those same mistakes and that's why i'm teaching you don't go all saint holy on them you know because they don't learn Learn that way. I've been around youths long enough. Let me tell you, parents who are listening to me right now, they've I've been around young people long enough to know that it's your vulnerability that they can feed on, not your your sanctimonious and um, uh, holy sanctified self and stance about sex. The more vulnerable you can get with them, the easier you can get through to them okay okay so that's another thing uh, we're talking about for those who just joined us we're talking about places where your youths are learning about sex we talked about school and about home church is another place that our young people get to learn about sex but this is going to shock you church i call it the 11th commandment thou shall not have sex that is all they hear in church but listen people that will not suffice anymore for the 21st century youth thou shall not have sex shall not suffice anymore because surprisingly enough your young people your christian youths and singles know that commandment already i call it the 11th commandment they know they are not supposed to have sex but we live in a world where our young people are fully developed you know you see a 12 year old girl in church you know eyebrows on fleek you know you know highlights done lipstick banging you know she's looking up there she's probably taller than me i'm only five foot four you know so our youths are well developed you know hips popping they look beautiful they look like women at the age of 12. do you understand and so they they we and because we live also in already a sexualized you know um, 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 um century they know a lot they learn a lot from the internet already so they already developed but what am where am i going with this it will shock you that 
in church, in church, our and I'm going to speak on behalf of our young girls. In church, our young girls are revealing. Please listen to me if you're a parent. Our young girls have revealed that there's a new breed of demonic uncles, fondling fathers, okay, pedophilic pastors. Cabo Shata, listen to me as I say this. There's a new breed of demonic ushers, demonic protocol officers, all those uncles and family friends in church who are grooming our young girls in the house of God. Now, if you can't find safety in the house of God, where would you find safety? I'm speaking on behalf of the youth tonight, guys. We're talking about sanctified sexuality. We need to get it right. We need to get it right. Our young girls have revealed that because they look fully developed, all pretty and nice. These uncles don't keep to themselves, okay? They say to them when they walk into church, mm -mm, Tony, you're developing into a, a woman now. How is your mommy? And asking about their mommy and their eyes are busy feeding on the poor girl from her head, front of her head to the stone of her feet. Demonic uncles in church. So these youths are being exposed to uncles who are meant to be guarding them, pastors who are meant to be protecting them. Come on, people. Okay? They begin to tell these young girls that you are growing, you are developing. They hug them. They hug them, pull them in for bear hugs, breast nipples, touching them. This is terrible and it is happening in the house of god and i'm sorry if nobody would say it i would say it you know i'm a youth pastor and i'm unrepentant i have to say these things hugging and touching these teenagers endlessly you know asking them how they are doing when is your sex texting them at ungodly hours of the day if a 12 year old texts you uncle uncle listen to me pastor uncle whoever you are in church if a 12 year old girl 15 year old girl i don't care how old she is texts you at 2 a.m you need to ignore or report her the next day to her youth pastor or her parents you don't be replying those messages she's vulnerable she doesn't know what she's doing you know what you're doing somebody has to be the bigger person okay so you know we have these uncles that talk to them in corners you walk past in church and there's a corner and uncle is standing there holding onto the wall and talking to these young girls they're grooming this young people and so it is so sad that our young people are learning about sex in church but the wrong way too i'm sorry i have to say these things if it feels offensive to you well you're in the right place because i need to say a few things that are offensive to you so that we can change the narrative okay these young people are fed up of getting sexualized in church too okay and that's why we're saying this thing you can tell i'm screaming now because i'm so fed up about the situation anyways i've already told my girls i've given them the permission to use their bibles and hit those uncles in the crotch where it hurts so they can be castrated by the sword of the spirit amen because we can't have you grooming our young girls touching our young girls in the wrong places if they cannot get sanctified in the church of god where else are they going to get holy word and holy people around them stop hugging those young girls stop hugging them leave them alone you know the bible makes us understand that in the book of song of solomon don't awaken love before it pleases these young girls are hormonal their hormones are all about the place don't encourage it don't encourage it and i'm really begging i'm begging because these are reports and statistics i have gotten from the church from the church and i think it's about time we we, we we know we sit upright and help to build and not break our young people okay so anyway the youth have now felt let down so our youth have felt let, let down by the educational system the home front okay the church framework so they turn to what they know and what do they know people they know the media they know the internet they know their friends you know they know pornography they know their own bodies so they masturbate they only fall, turn to things that are informative and not transformative they don't turn to the word of god for sex because i don't think they even know any scripture on sex so they turn to what they know and so it is important that we begin to change the narrative and educate our young people that is why we have this platform tonight and for this month when i'm doing this series on sanctified sexuality we're going to be exploring sex from a sanctified perspective from a god perspective now for any young person listening to me listen to this sex or the feelings of sex is perfectly normal in fact if you don't feel like having sex i will take you to the gynecologist to check you up or the urologist whoever it is that you need to see amen don't ever go don't i don't want you to leave this platform with that mindset that we've been taught in the church that sex is wrong sex is not 
bad. Sex in itself is not bad. And I'm going to tell you why. We are sexual beings. Just the same way you're a spiritual being, you're a psychological being, you're a physiological being. You are a sexual being and you have sexual organs and you experience sexual feelings and the expression of this sexual feelings is what your sexuality is. It is completely natural and it's completely normal and it is achieved with the help of your brain. So you cannot help how you feel. That is how you've been created. What you can help is what I'm going to now tell you. Now, sex occurs on so many levels. For those of you who just think it's a penis and a vagina coming together, sorry for the graphics, but hey, we're talking about sex, people, and I have to say it as it is. Now, it's a complex process. Sex involves biological, erotic, physical, emotional behavior, social behavior, spiritual context, for those of you who don't know that, and social behavior. And you shouldn't be made to feel like sex is wrong or sexual feelings are wrong. It is not. You can quote Pastor Tony anyway. If anyone says to you, oh my gosh, if you're asking you, what, what do you think about sex? Is it, sex is good. Sex is natural. Sex is normal. Pastor Tony said so. Amen. Okay, so I need you to understand that it is normal. I want to change that mindset. I want to change that narrative. Sex is good. Sex is normal. Sex is natural. And it was created by God. And the Bible says everything that God created was good. Genesis 1. Okay, now I want you to understand that instead of being of teaching our youths and singles how to then manage this complex biological, you know, psychological, physiological process. We just shut down their feelings, you know, and, and, and that's what makes them go into places where they can express and experience these feelings. And we need to stop shutting them down. Today's session is about celebrating world purity. And that's why we're talking about sanctified sexuality, basically sex. Letting you know that you shouldn't be taught that these feelings are wrong. You just need to know that you have a sense of responsibility for the expression and the experience of these feelings. I repeat, the feelings for sex is not wrong. What you need to have is a sense of responsibility for expressing and experiencing those feelings. So a lot of times the way I explain it to you is this, you know, all of us experience hunger and thirst. But will you leave your house right now? You're not poor or anything. You live at home and go into the bin and get food to eat just because you're hungry and you don't feel like cooking or waiting for the food to get ready. So you just go into the bin. If mom says to you, I'm cooking, your, your wife says, yeah, I'm cooking. And you're like, I don't want to wait for the food. So I'm going to go into the bin and eat. Would you do that? And uh, you might use you say, of course not. I'm not going to eat from the bean. Of course not. Now, I would ask them again. Okay, so if you were very thirsty and uh, you just didn't want to go into the fridge to get some cold water, would you drink your own urine? And they say, no, that's absurd. Why am I going to do that? I'm just going to wait and get some water. Now, while that might sound really disgusting and nasty, sex is not nasty. But in the same way, I try to build a liking to time and place for the experiencing and the expression of sexual sexual um, satisfaction. Sexual satisfaction has to occur within boundaries. You cannot just up and go and have sex because you feel like it or because it's normal. That is an abnormal behavior. You're not a rabbit. Listen to me, people. Okay? You need to know that there is a time and a place. Just the same way you're not going to drink your own urine because you're thirsty. You're not just going to go and open your legs and have sex. That is animalistic behavior. For those of you who've already been doing it, you are doing it. Jesus has forgiven you. Amen. Okay, listen. Sex can only be done in the sanctity of marriage in the sanctity of my that is where god wants you to have sex in marriage not the day you get your engagement ring not the day you find the boy at that rave in marriage and there's a reason for it in marriage and god wants that in marriage for a few reasons i'm going to talk about that i have a few scriptures but i don't want to bible bash you but i want you to understand in genesis 2 24 the bible says for this reason a man shall leave his dad and his mom he will be united it's not just talked about talking about physical unit uni unison so that they can move in together and get married but also bible says they shall become one flesh which talks about consummating sex in marriage okay so god wants you to have sex in marriage where it is sanctified now listen 
even in marriage the bible says in hebrews 13 4 that marriage is supposed to be held in honor the bed is undefiled which means your marriage bed is meant to be kept pure and as a young person as a single person it starts now your marriage in in, in years to come your sexual intimacy you're meant to guard it from now it's not when you get married you say you know what i'm just going to stop sleeping with everybody and only sleep with my husband you need to start now because jesus owns that body of yours your body is a temple the bible says in romans that you present this body 12 1 and 2 as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable it is your reasonable service it's just your the least service you can do is present your body present your body that's all god wants you to do because god lives in that body and he don't want you going in and out of places okay now i want you to understand that no other form of sexuality is condoned in the bible the reason i'm saying this about sanctified sexuality is that young people also have a really warped idea about what sexuality means in this 21st century it is a bit scary it is actually utterly ridiculous so i'm sorry but i have to address a few norms that you think are normal but are not normal when god God talks about sanctified sexuality in Hebrews 13 4 he does he makes it clear that this is between man and woman and sexual intimacy is reserved for a couple male and female only no other form or use of sexuality is condoned by scripture and so because sex is God's gift to you you don't defile it you don't defile it before marriage and you don't defile it in marriage and so with my young people again I'm using that as the example here we explored different types of expression of sex and you are not going to believe what they told me but in the meantime let me talk about different forms of defilement for those who probably don't understand when you defile your body or the marital bed according to hebrews 13 4 i'm talking about number one fornication first corinthians 6 13, 18 says it you know sex before marriage is not fun it is fornication not fun fornication okay marriage involves just two people man and woman and sex before that you have no right to no right to break that vow and begin to sleep with someone you are not married to sex was designed as a consecration a consecration in marriage god knew what he was doing and so all forms of sexuality outside of marriage is against that order and brings dishonor to god okay so that's one form of defilement the next one is adultery if you're in a marital relationship you're not supposed to be having sex after outside of marriage you have offended god it is a way of defiling your marital bed another form of defilement is homosexuality i don't care if it, this doesn't sound um you know politically correct despite the world's current embrace of homosexuality i have to tell you what the bible says the bible makes us understand that this was never sanctioned by god please go and read the book of romans you need to understand that this was not sanctioned by god leviticus 20 13 already tells us it's an abomination first corinthians 6 9 first timothy 1 9 to 10 jude 1 7 makes it very clear that it is a distortion of god's gift of sex homosexuality is a distortion of the physical unity between a man and a woman so it is not of god you need to understand that that is defilement what is another defilement prostitution and i'm not even talking about the professional prostitutes i'm talking about you also who goes from boy to boy girl to girl man to man have a detailed look at it it is only destruction that comes upon that and that is why god made it clear in hosea made it clear in jeremiah god doesn't appreciate you giving your body off to the highest bidder you know you're not jollof rice josephine for those of you at university you are not potato paulina cooking for this boy cooking for that boy only to keep sleeping with them what did they send you to school for do you understand what i'm trying to say you need to stop all that nonsense and stop opening up your private garden to any kind of farmer amen i need somebody to hear me tonight we're talking about sanctified sexuality another way of defiling your body is pornography and masturbation the use of sexual gratification because it's been modernized and they tell you you've got to let it out if nobody allows you to do it go get a sex toy for yourself you're a single woman you know you're a single guy and just you know have fun with yourself sexual gratification in that modernized manner outside of the marital bed is still a distortion of God's gift. It is still a distortion of God's gift. And you need to understand that. Listen, you were created a sexual being. Yes spiritual being physical being and sex happens on all levels but you need to understand 
that you need to be pure in your body pure in your spirit and pure in your soul anyway back to the story about my young people I wanted to talk to defi about defilement so that we are all clear about what Hebrews 13, 4 talks about. Now, uh, we, uh, we talked about it in the, you know, in, in the group. And, you know, I was asking the young people, you know, tell me, well, you know, what do you understand about sex? And honestly, these young people just want, and singles want to explore their minds. They want to explore their world. They have inquisitive minds and they are being introduced every day. One of, uh, you know, one experience I had in a conference, a young man said that he was introduced to masturbation at the age of nine, just from TV, from watching a commercial now let me talk on behalf of the girls again because i i sound like i'm slightly biased about the girls maybe because i'm a girl but anyway the girls really talk to me and our girls honestly try to remain virgins they honestly try big ups to all the young girls who are still trying out there who are working on purity and sanctity within their sexuality god bless you god is rooting for you you have a cloud of witnesses clapping for you now our girls are trying so hard they want to be virgins and they even want to live up to the expectations of their pastors their parents their mentors and their guardians but sometimes they are not equipped you know, a lot of our young girls, we tell them don't have sex. Oh, they don't want to have sex, but they're not equipped. They're not equipped with the right sort of arsenal or tools to be able to resist sex before marriage, you know? And so they are left with no option but to succumb to the pressure. Now, a lot, I told you we're going to be using a lot of the urban dictionary in today's session. And uh, one of one of the um, ways in which they describe sexual urges, young people, is roasting. So they call it roasting. When you're sitting there, maybe it's during your ovulation and, you know, your boobs are tender and you're all worked up in your hormones and you're just roasting and you just want to do the doo-doo okay all right so they don't want to be seen as weird they don't want to be seen and i'm talking if you're a parent here listen to me your, your teenager doesn't want to be seen as weird everybody already thinks she's weird she's the only one talks about jesus you're not the only one right so they don't want to be seen as weird so they tend to want to meet that boy halfway listen to me these young girls want to meet the boy halfway so what do they do they begin to succumb to heavy petting heavy kissing a bit of oral sex and in the urban dictionary it's called giving head or giving brain unfortunately they are truly giving their brains amen now okay so in the urban dictionary they are giving head they're giving brain which is oral sex so for parents who don't know that i'm already giving you the codes okay they're giving to anal sex oral sex heavy petting kissing uh touching first base second base first second Days, you know pornography and masturbation this way young girls will say that this way they feel like they can remain virgins for a longer period of time uh, they feel like they're not hurting anybody uh, it's their own bodies and so when all else fails and the pressure from this boy i'm speaking on behalf of the girls right now uh, i'll speak on behalf of the boys if i have much more time but anyway the pressure continues and they have to give in to penetrative sex okay so they didn't have to give into penetrative sex so according to them by the time they get to this stage they've already done the petting the oral the anal the touching the kissing the heavy petting uh they've already done first base second base well they consider themselves having sinned about eight times already what's the point in in stopping you might as well get a condom and go all the way you know so we explored you know all these things about what they feel about their bodies why you would you want to give up your body to the highest bidder why would you want to succumb to sex before marriage and all those kind of things so so we explored you know parts of our bodies you know that's what i always do when i teach these sessions on sanctified sexuality with a youth group i i tell them to explore their bodies physiologically psychologically spiritually and sexually so that you know what your body is like and so i would always tell them your body is a temple spiritually you know in terms of um we talked already about about what you're allowing your body what you're allowing into your body as a temple we talked about defilement for those of you who are just joining us but i also teach them very important things about the gates to your soul because your soul is like the cpu of the body it's the computer and you oftentimes cannot delete what goes all the way inside of it so you need to guard the gates into the soul which are the ears the eyes you know the ears and the eyes because the bible makes us understand that faith cometh by hearing and so does everything else and all the things you see on social 
social media and the eyes you know we we need practical ways to deal with this sexual pressures there's no point in telling your young people to stop no, not have sex there's no point in telling them sex is wrong when it is not bad you know there's no point in giving them all these blanket statements we need to give them practical ways to deal with sexual pleasures pressures by the way okay so the first thing i need you to understand because i know that the youth are not going to go to scripture to find the answers they will want to go to google and ask google google don't know what he's doing about sex so i better tell you the truth the first thing the bible says about sex is first thessalonians 5 22 you need to run you need to flee you need to run. joseph knew the scriptures and he had never read first thessalonians he ran away from that mrs potiphar oh my god because the anointing does not respond to an erection amen you need to run the anointing does not respond to an erection without direction you need to move 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 people if you're in an environment where you know you're beginning to have an erection without direction girl you know you're on your ovulation and everywhere is tender jesus is lord you need to run you need to leave that boy's house you need to leave that girl's room you need to run as far as your legs can take you first thessalonians 5 22 is the scripture you need okay bible says flee all appearances even if it just looks like it begin to run okay another scripture you need to look like at is first thessalonians 4 3 to verse 8 it is god's will that you are sanctified that you avoid sexual immorality i want to read that scripture to you because i know somebody listening to me today you ain't going to read that scripture so let me help you okay that you should control your body first thessalonians 4 first thessalonians 4 3 to 8 it is God's will, if you want to be in the center of God's will, listen to me, that you should be sanctified. We're talking about sanctified sexuality. That you should avoid sexual immorality. That you should learn. Learn your own body. God is even telling you, you see that body of yours? Learn it, you know? In, in physical health, in, in, you know, in biology, they will teach you all parts of your body, places you should touch. But Bible is trying to let you know, don't just learn what those places look like. You need to learn how to control them, okay? Control that body in a way that is holy and is a way that is honorable, not in passionate lust. So you shouldn't learn your body and how your body moves and all of that for it to be passionate lust. No, no, no. The Bible says in verse 7, God did not call you to be impure. He called you to a holy life. Now, let's go to practical steps on how to deal with sexual pressures. Listen to me, guys. If you're in that rave and that boy's trying to grind on you, first of all, you shouldn't be there, baby girl. You shouldn't be there, my young man. Now, in case you find yourself in those tricky situations where the night did not actually start out as though you were going to have sex, but it looks like you're headed there, what you want to do is, apart from fleeing, <laughs> you want to take a cold shower on that erection that has no direction. Because you're not going to be dropping your, your junk in every trunk. Amen. No, no, no. You need control. Because HIV wears a bra. If you were having an erection and a girl tells you by the way i've got hiv won't you stop you will stop so what i'm trying to tell you is you need to have control you need to be having a cold shower if you feel like having sex and you ain't married then you have no right to be breaking god's law okay take a cold shower take a walk change your environment joseph everything that joseph did something did not do everything that samson did joseph did not do you need to learn the difference a bad, a good run is better than a bad stand i repeat a good run is better than a bad stand don't stand in a place because you think you're strong enough something you will end up having a cut a mohawk in delilah's barber's shop okay all right be accountable to someone be accountable to someone i always tell my youths if you feel like having sex with someone please call me on the phone there is no way you're gonna have sex with me so you know win 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 situation call me on the phone say auntie i feel like having sex i would always be happy to pick your call because we will not be having sex amen so you know it's a win-win for jesus you need to find somebody you can call and speak to and please not the opposite sex i don't care if it's your uncle mm -hmm. 
You don't call someone the opposite sex and tell them how you're feeling that particular month, okay? No, no. You want to call somebody of the same sex, okay, same gender, who's like a mentor and somebody who can talk you out of that nonsense. I've told a lot of young people, you need to surround yourself with four kinds of people and one of them is a confronter, okay? One of the C's I teach people, a collaborator, a comforter, and a confronter. When you feel like having sex, an erection with no direction, places you're not supposed to be having sex, we're talking about sexuality, sanctified, you need to be calling somebody who can confront you with a foolishness that you're doing amen okay be accountable to somebody guard your gates watch what you're listening to what you're reading it might sound funny now but you know it might sex might sound funny but the repercussions are not funny you need to understand that talk to god about it talk to god about it god created sex sex is beautiful sex is good god can do something about the way you feel and that is the truth that is the honest truth. God can do something about it. I know you might sound like you're blushing, thinking that, oh my God, why should I be talking to God about sex? But you can. He created that feeling in you. And we already talked about this earlier. It's not a bad feeling. You need to talk to him. Also, I always teach people this. For you to get rid of a bad virus, you need to be getting an antivirus into that CPU. You need to be infusing the word of God into places where you've watched that porno, where you've read that book you shouldn't have, where you've watched that threesome video, all those text messages that are sending you to hell, one watch WhatsApp message at the time, you need to be deleting those friends, you know? So you need to begin to join groups or get messages that encourage the God in you, the God factor in you. I want to round up by saying this. Guys, listen. Sex is a sex, it's a spiritual affair. I want, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm telling you the God's own truth. Sex is a spiritual affair. Don't ever think, okay, that condoms will protect you from demons sex is a spiritual affair the hymen and permit me to go graphic as i begin to round up the hymen in a woman for instance is that transparent layer okay in a virgin okay that is broken and separated during sex you see it can be likened because the word um, 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 intercourse, okay, during when the Bible says that a man knows a woman, that word knowing is likened also to yada, which is also worship, okay? So the Hebrew connotations of knowing, of entering a woman, of having intercourse is also the same one that's intertwined with the word worship in Hebrew. So God knew what he was doing. It is the deepest final height of deep cons consecration between humans. It is the same sort of level you have when you worship and when you worship what do you do you go into the tabernacle you remember the tabernacle in the olden days only one priest was allowed behind that thin veil that can be likened to the hymen of a woman only one priest was allowed and if that priest was not even clean he would die in you know going through that veil do you understand only one priest i want to emphasize was allowed behind that hymen was allowed behind that thin layer again i'm likening the hymen you know to the thin layer of veil within the tabernacle within the old testament so that you understand the connotations from a place of worship yeah that okay now what am i trying to say i'm trying to say that when things are allowed it, you know, allowed in, you know, behind your veil without God's permission, something always dies. Just the same way that priest dies when he goes behind that veil on, on ungodly, you know, and unlawfully, something always dies. And it's the same with sexual sin. Something always dies. God did not create you young ladies to have different kind of priests, dirty, dirty boxers, all kind of heights and all kind of things walking through your veil and having a busy situation like traffic at Clapham Junction. You were not created for that. I want to repeat that. That's not how you were created. You weren't created to have a lot of traffic down there. Amen. You were created for one priest to go behind there like God created for the inner court. And guys, I have a word for you. You were not created to go about testing every girl like you're on Christmas sale. It's not a winter, winter sale. You're not here to be testing every girl in your church and every girl in your school because you're the choir director. Are you listening to me? Sex might be fun, but the repercussions are not funny and when done outside of marriage the repercussions could be deadly that's how stds came about and there are many things that stds connotes that i will talk about another time but i need you to understand this whenever blood is shed a covenant ensues go and read scriptures go and read leviticus life is in the blood every time blood is shed that is why blood had to be shed for your sin Every time blood is shed, a covenant is established. And it can be established without your permission. In fact, your permission is already there because your blood has been shed. 
I know you're sitting there looking at me thinking, well, I'm not a virgin anymore. So I don't have any blood shedding. Well, from the moment your blood shed was shed, if it was in marriage, that's the covenant of marriage consummated. If it is outside of marriage, your blood was shed and you feel you can keep doing it and doing it. Let me tell you, if you continue to have sex outside of marriage because you think you no know, more bloodshed, I shed the blood once, you know, I'm diverging now and I'm okay. You continue to service an existing covenant. Listen to me. You don't just have a pre-existing covenant now with whoever Johnson was. Now you're existing. You're now servicing the covenant with Jonathan, Julius, Samson, and, 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 and whoever else is coming, coming your way. Are you listening to me? Men, you are carriers of the mandate. Young boys, you need to understand. Because a lot of young men, I meet a lot of young men and say to me, well, I'm not a virgin. I'm not breaking any hymen. Your sperm is DNA. Your sperm contains life. Leviticus says life is in that same blood. So that is your bodily fluid you are losing. Life is in the blood. Leviticus 17, 11. And every time you lose blood, girls, and every time you shed your, your, your semen, boys, whether it's into a condom or into a bed, I don't care where you're putting your beaks all about the place. Outside of marriage, something leaves you and never returns. I'm going to have to stop right here because obviously we're going to continue this another time. But I want you to understand the implications of sin. We're going to be talking about sexual purity. I want you to tell your friends. This is a series we're going to be doing this month. So get ready. We're going to be talking deep, guys. We're going to be talking up deep. And for those of you who haven't purchased my books for your youths, if you're a parent here or your youth leader, you need to get this book because I'm actually teaching from this book tonight okay you need to get this book for your youth groups for your you know teenagers especially when you can have that conversation that very weird conversation you know about sex with them this gives you an opportunity to open up that conversation because they can read it my book is titled the adam and eve phenomenon the forbidden fruit it talks about adam and eve what they did wrong and relates it to you adam that young boy in your in your house and eve that young girl in your house so that we can go to the beginning because jesus said in the beginning it wasn't so i'm out of time we're going to continue this series sanctified sexuality tell your friends we're celebrating world purity month and this month we're going to be talking about sex whether you like it or not it's winter and it's cold outside and some strange demon would want you to cuddle up with somebody that you're not supposed to be doing and in jesus name we're going to stop that from happening amen hallelujah okay i'm out of time thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for parents pastors youths youth leaders you know i try to make the topic of sex fun you know interesting and interactive so that young people don't go away with the wrong connotation it's time to change the narrative sex is not wrong sex is natural sex is beautiful you know and god wants you to get the right information so you can keep yourself for the right person god bless you so much for joining us and um, um tonight see you again we're back tomorrow for our prayer meeting we're back on sunday oh my god just keep tuning in and thank you for tuning in and um if you want to give to this cause so yes also we do a promo for if you are not a youth okay you're an adult it's also for singles and for young people but you want to sponsor like um last time we shipped over about 25 copies to nigeria so if you want to sponsor uh, for young people as well so you're a pastor on this platform you're a young person you're an adult you're a parent it doesn't matter who you are but you want to inbox us and say you know what i want to pay for one copy so it's 10 pounds i want to pay for a copy or i want to pay for 10 copies and put it in the hands of every young person the aim of this ministry is to educate our generation let our young people know that their bodies are a beautiful temple and it's about time we preserve what god has situated so if you want to sponsor this our ministry leaves for every every single amount that comes in or the proceeds that come in here go towards this ministry to actually equip young people uh, uh, um, uh, with the word of god and the right connotations with regards to sex so if you want to sponsor that please send us a message on the inbox our details are right there oh our, 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 our bank details are there please just put in there write us a message say i've deposited 100 pounds whatever it is you want to deposit and we can get this book out to every young person you know it doesn't matter if they're 10 or if they're 20 or if they're 30 let's educate our generation god bless you and thank you so much for joining us my name again is Uluwa Tonyajala, and this is moments of excellence with trust bridge academy god bless you and see you next time amen
At this point, we want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who has made this possible. Trustbridge Academy is five years this year and we are super grateful for all the people who have paid the price to make this happen. We want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank our partners. We want to thank our founders. We want to thank our partners, our volunteers. Oh my God, people who have put in their time, talent and treasure to make this beautiful project make this dream a reality honestly we couldn't thank you enough but you have put a smile on god's face one thing about partnership is that it is a viable means of spreading the gospel via the people and the tools that god has chosen and in form of partnership you get blessed by the rewards where you can get to your money your funds your talent your treasure gets there now, if you would like to partner with this ministry, from all that you have seen, we are on a mission to raise a people of excellence. Where places you can't reach, we are ready to go there with the funds that you give us. If you're ready to partner with us, details will be on the screen on how you can make one-off payments, monthly payments, or yearly payments via direct debits or bank transfer just to help this ministry get to the places that God has sent us to. We thank you so much for making a decision to be a part of this journey and this movement to change the trajectory of our nation, one youth at a time. God bless you. God bless you. And thank you once again for giving to the Lord.